1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 4. We got it. Okay. Take you through a trip to the Eggersville Hose Company building located at Main and Maynard in Eggersville, New York. A nostalgic trip to this beautiful building before we abandon it very shortly. The room we are about to see, the first room, is the main uh, room that used to be the pool room. When the building was first built, the pool table sat in this room, and later on the uh, meetings were held here about to picture some of the things on the walls and so forth. Okay? Now what? This particular uh, picture, these are beautiful panel doors that open up into the main lounge in the front, front room. I've had them closed so we can see these beautiful doors. Okay. Now as we're turning this uh, machine around, you're going to point to the south wall where you'll see a picture, a framed uh, plaque on the wall, which are a memorial for the veterans of the First World War who were members of the Eggersville Hose Company at that time. Keep turning and you'll be looking out the windows toward the west where the original fire hall used to sit out where the parking lot is today. As you keep turning, you'll see another plaque on the wall, which is a plaque in memory of the fellows that served in the Second World War. Now we're moving around to facing the north end of this particular room, which is your door entry, and uh, trophy cases and so forth that are on the other wall there. Uh, that's enough. That's the plaque on the west wall that you're looking at now is in memory of Brother Fireman Ed Greeno, who died in 1970 at a house fire on Westfield Road. The next plaque that you'll be looking at is a beautiful plaque that was dedicated to the memory of all the deceased members of the Eggersville Hose Company. It includes all the members that have passed away since the company was formed. The next picture and plaque that you're going to be looking at will be a picture of Fritzy Brunner, a member of this hose company which was killed in France. He was a paratrooper. He was killed in France in the Second World War. Period. This room was remodeled to some extent, had a double glass window that faced both the west and the, and the north wall. It had a wicket in it. We used to take tickets when we ran card parties and dances as people entered. The ticket window was in this particular corner. Now we'll face toward that room. The picture that you're looking at now is a picture of a 1937 Mac when it was brand new, just before we ran a test on it. It gives a test how we made less than 1,100 gallons per minute with a 750 pump, period. Okay, now this is the east wall of, the, of this room. The picture you're looking at now is a picture of the original fire hall that stood right next to this building now where the parking lot is now, just to the west of this building. If you lower the camera, you'll see the upstairs of the old fire hall, the upstairs rooms, meeting rooms, and the bar of the old fire hall. When this building was built, the other one stood for a short time while they moved all the furniture from one window to the other through this particular hall. Okay. Now you're going to go on top. Again, you'll see a picture of the 1937 Mac, which replaced our original uh, motorized apparatus at 1924 FWD, which threw a crankshaft going to a call in Tonawanda in 1936. The upper picture you want to looking at now is a fire at the parish house, St. Paul's Lutheran Church on Main Street in March of 1950. Period. <coughs> I'll 
identify the people in the pictures. That's Red Blackburn, chief at the time, at the bottom of the ladder. On the top of the ladder is George Brown and myself, Bill Bellinson. Other people in the picture were Lowell Lamont and Norm Johnson. What you're looking at now is the card table. It was built by Brother Frank Brown, may he rest in peace. It was in an old fire hall. It was moved to our new fire hall for many years, sat in the card room downstairs. We had it refinished. I inherited it. I gave it to the fire district, and they refinished it. It's a beautiful job. It's a very rare table, seven sides, period. And this is George Simon's gem certificate. But that's neither. Lights? Anything uh, particular you want to talk about? Are, you, are, we, are we on? Yep. What you're looking at is our display case. It has some pictures and some exempt certificates. You'll see a picture of Rudy Betker, our first chief and president, Gene Brown, who was president for 10 years, the president of the State Association. Secretary of the State Association, founder of the Amherst Fire Council, founder of Erie County Firemen's Association, and president of both. You'll see pictures of the three remaining charter members taken at one of our anniversaries in 1958. Picture of Allie Harbour and George Simons and Art Sappelt. They were the last three charter members left. As you turn it here, you'll see a picture of uh, chiefs at the time we made first time we made uh, second assistant chief you'll see uh, Ray Brown assistant chief myself as chief and Ira Stusky as assistant chief the next picture you'll see over here is a picture of, of Joe Red Blackburn who was chief past chief a past president and a past fire commissioner and the exempt certificates as you'll see is a picture of uh, uh, Gene Brown's exempt certificate and George Simon's exempt certificate. This is a, that exempt certificate was taken out in 1921. Period. What you're looking at now is our Erie County Volunteer Firemen's Association certificate. And below, you're looking at a picture of our 1937 Mack Pumper and our 1932 Cadillac squad car. In that picture, you'll see Ray Johnson is driving the Mack, Allie Harburn, Al Yankee, Joe Blackburn, and George Simons in the picture, period. These big panel doors, and you're facing south into the main lounge room. What you're looking at is a beautiful room, furnished beautifully. And we're going to turn to the right now and show the fireplace and the lovely wood paneling in this room. Period. Better view of this beautiful fireplace and wood paneling throughout the west wall of this front room. Period. Over here. Okay. What you're looking at is a picture on the south wall or front wall of this room is a picture of Betsy Ross and a flag presented to the Eggersville Hose Company by the Ladies Auxiliary in 1916. Period. What you're looking at now on the south wall in the front of this room, our original certificates, our membership in the Firemen's Association of State of New York dating back to Secret to the memory of Corporal Edward P. Shellis, Company K, 7th Infantry, wounded in the Battle of Moose Argonne, October 16, 1918. Died in the United States Veterans 
Children's Hospital, Greenville, South Carolina, March 29, 1922, age 34 years. Member of the Hose Company, number one, presented by Ladies Auxiliary of the Hose Company, June 3rd, 1922. This room on the east wall of this room is a picture of the past chiefs of the Edwards Hose Company. Starting in the beginning from Chief Rudy Becker, who was the first chief and president uh, for 18 years, from 1908 to 1926, followed by Chief Harry Dealing, who was chief from 26 to 29, and he died in office while he was even president of the Western New York Associ Fireman's Association. The following chief you'll see is Frank Weibel, who took uh, Harry's place for the interim of his term and uh, just had it for a short time at that time. He became chief again in 1934, 1940. Uh, one chief that's not pictured here is Billy Banks, which was in the, in the interim of that period. Next chief is Charlie Krieger, 30, 31, 32. Next chief is Freddie Kempf which was 33 and 34, Freddie Kemp died in office also. The following chief, as you'll see, is Al Yankee. He followed Frank Weigel, because uh, Frank was chief to 40, and Al Yankee took his place in 1940 to 1950. The next one you'll see is Joe Red Blackburn, who was chief from 50 to 54. The next chief is Otto Streschke, who was, was chief from 55 to 1959, and the next chief is William Valenson, was chief from 1960 to 1977, followed by Ira Stresky, was chief from 77 to 80. Kitchenette and lavatory. 
was there? What kind of brick is that, Bill? That's glazed brick. Beautiful. The district map used to be there. We also used to have a, a map on the wall of the Andersonville prison, and we had maps of the life of a fireman who were taken out of the original Buffalo Exempts building. We had him here for many years, and then we sent him down to fireman's home. What's that big tank up there for, Bill? That's the air tank for compressed air for the horn. and 
dances and various things like that. <laughs> we had we, we had smokers and stag parties. What went out of the smokers? Well, if you don't know now, you never will. Why did they stop? All good things come to an end. Third floor, dumbwaiter area, slap sink. Oi. just had envelope stuffing for the fund drive for the 1995 fund drive last night and uh, that's what you're looking at right now and this was a later addition this boardroom it serves a purpose for the firematic officers the table officers and the exempt benevolent association officers Looking down the front stairs, looking south on the main street with a beautiful window in the upper foyer. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous window. And a little uh, balcony that we have in front of the building. Period. Now we'll turn around and face the north wall and you see the other end of the way. This Up until 1965, we had a 
organization called Eggleston Hose Club. We had about 3,400 club memberships. We had a key. It cost them a dollar a year. Some of the finest people in the area and all the different fire companies come here. Whenever they pass through Eggleston, they stop here. I can still see Charlie behind the bar. Uh, this uh, building was owned by the fire company at that time. We supported ourselves with a bar and with the food. We had dinners here and a dance band on Saturday and Sundays. It was a great place. The meals were very reasonable and so were the drinks. We made our money on the slot machines. Where there's trophy cases now, we had five slot machines in there. And a sign behind them that says, if you win, smile. If you lose, smile also for the building fund. I remember a legend of a little boy. He used to reach above the bar there and grab a sandwich when he was down with his father. Oh, yes, when this place first opened in 1932 or 33, we had partitions in the bar. He used to come down. The first fire end had the free lunch on it, and I grabbed a little free lunch, and Freddie Kemp from BB, he was the chief and also steward of the bar, and he'd try to grab me, but I was too fast for him. He was a very heavy man. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the big cigar smoker in the group? There was... Uh, Somebody who used to harass the guys on duty night with the cigar? Well, Charlie Krieger's a cigar, but he didn't harass the guys. Well, well the Eggert's so legends, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to go to all of that. Yeah. In the far corner where you're pointing now, you see the alarm box that's in there. That was the master box that used to stand on the corner of Main and Maynard, uh, where we had the alarm system on the street boxes. Okay.
got a rate if we ran the machines out of here and out the back? Okay. Yep. What was talking about? Uh oh. Opened up here in 32, 33. I had menus which showed chicken dinners on Sunday for four course chicken dinners for 60 cents, along with 3.2 beer. <laughs> Fish fries were even cheaper. Both cost dinners every night. How much was the dues for the key club? One dollar a year. One dollar a year per family or per person? Per key holder. The key holders. So a family would have to have. If a fella comes down here with his family, it yeah. just cost him a dollar a year, that's all. <laughs> that's good. That was just a token. That's great. Here's looking south in the club room. Old chief, new chief. 